Hello guys, my name is Priya Singh Range. As you all know by now, I am an assistant professor at the LJ Institute of Physiotherapy. And we have been discussing a lot about biomedical physics lately. So going with the same flow, today we'll be talking about the different laws that govern the electromagnetic radiations. So today we'll be talking about the different laws that govern radiations. As we know, electromagnetic radiations are not something that uh, just travel randomly and have effects randomly. They have certain laws by which they abide and based on these laws, we can understand the traveling pattern of these radiations, uh, the absorption of these radiations, how they are going to interact with the tissues that are present inside the body. So based on these laws, we can understand the effects that these radiations are going to have on the human body so uh, let's begin with these uh, radiation laws some of them we'll be discussing uh, like the snell's law the Grothes law the cosine law and the inverse square law so let's begin with the snell's law first the statement of the snell's law is that refraction causes the waves to be deflected from their original course by an amount that depends on the media involved and the angle of incidence. Here what we mean to say is that whenever the waves, the electromagnetic waves, they strike the surface of any tissue or skin, uh, the waves are going to have a deflection from their original course. So they won't be traveling in the same direction as they were traveling previously in the medium but there will be a change in the direction of their traveling and this phenomenon is known as refraction. The amount by which they are going to be deflected that is going to depend on the different media that are involved. The medium that the ray was traveling in and the medium that the ray is going now into so it will depend on both these media and also on the angle of incidence the angle at which the wave is striking the surface between the two media so that is the snell's law when we say that uh, it depends on the medium it depends on the difference that exists between these two media if the wave is going to travel into an optically denser medium the refraction is going to be towards the normal. If it is going to travel in an optically less dense medium, then the refraction is going to be away from the normal. We need to remember this in order to understand how the electromagnetic waves are going to enter into the human body and how they are going to travel through the different tissues of the human body. And also, this uh, Snell's law can be applied to the mechanics of hydrotherapy because uh, whenever we are taking the patient into water there is the air water interface which makes it really difficult for the therapist as well as the patient to assess the definite position of any object that is placed inside water so it becomes very difficult to perceive the depth of the water to perceive the depth of any object when it is placed inside water the next law which uh, governs the electromagnetic radiations is the Grothus's law. It is the first of the two basic laws of photochemistry. It is also known as the Grothus Draper law and it was first proposed by Christian J.D.T. von Grothus and later by John W. Draper and hence the name Grothus Draper law. According to the Grothus law, for any electromagnetic wave to have an effect on the tissues they must be absorbed unless the electromagnetic waves are getting absorbed into the tissues they are not going to have the any kind of effect now this effect that is occurring it will depend on the type of the tissue that is involved uh, this effect can be as low as a slight increase in the temperature or it can be as huge as complete destruction of the tissue whatever the effect is it may it will depend on the type of the tissue that is involved here secondly the amount of rays or the amount of waves that are getting absorbed into the tissues they are also going to depend on the wavelength of the electromagnetic waves 
the nature of the medium into which these waves are now going to travel and the angle of incidence. The next law which we are going to discuss is the cosine law. The cosine law states that the intensity of rays at a surface varies with the cosine of the angle between the incident ray and the normal. Here we are talking about the angle at which the electromagnetic waves are going to strike the surface and because uh, based on this angle of incidence as we have discussed in the Grotthus law just a few seconds previously it is also going to affect the proportion of the waves that are being absorbed. So why the angle of incidence is important? Because based on the angle of incidence, based on the cosine of the angle of incidence, the intensity of the waves is going to change because the amount of absorption is going to change. The cosine of 90 as we know based on the cosine table is 0 and the cosine of 0 degrees as we know is 1. What does this mean? This means that when the angle of incidence is 90 degrees to the normal, then no rays are going to be absorbed. Why so? Because when the angle of incidence is 90 degrees to the normal, it means that the waves, the electromagnetic waves are going to travel parallel to the surface of the medium. Now, since they are traveling parallel to the surface of the medium, it becomes very difficult for these uh, waves to penetrate inside the tissues in order to get absorbed and produce any effects. So no rays are going to be absorbed if the angle of incidence is 90 degrees. Similarly when we talk about an angle of incidence of 0 degrees, it is lying perpendicular to the surface of the medium. It is lying at 0 degrees to the normal and hence maximum rays are going to be absorbed. So if we want to give or provide the most effective treatment to our patient, we need to make sure that the maximum rays strike at 90 degrees to the surface. So whenever we are applying any ultraviolet or infrared radiations or ultrasound or any kind of electromagnetic radiations, we need to make sure that the applicator is lying in a perpendicular direction to the surface of the skin and it is lying at 0 degrees to the normal which is same as lying perpendicular to the surface of the skin. So we need to make sure of that in order to get maximum penetration and maximum benefit. The next is the inverse square law. The inverse square law states that the intensity of rays from a point source varies inversely with the square of the distance from that point source. So basically the intensity i is going to be proportional to 1 upon d square where d is the distance between the point source and the uh, surface of the skin and i is the intensity of the electromagnetic waves. So if we think about the clinical implication of this particular law we can say that the closer a patient is to the source or the point source the greater is the intensity of radiation that is being received at any one point on the skin and the further away the patient is from the point source the lesser is going to be the intensity that the patient feels so if we want to apply good amount of heat if we want the intensity to be high we need to reduce the distance between the point source and the patient and if we want mild heating we want lesser intensity then we can just increase the distance between the patient and the applicator based on these different laws we can decide uh, how to give our treatment the technique of application because ultimately if you are using these different laws that are governing the electromagnetic radiations we can minimize the wastage of electrical energy the wastage of heat energy and we can maximize the therapeutic benefits that our patient is going to gain for further reading you can look up at these books thank you